All right, guys, such we're here again today. Hope you're all having a fantastic Monday is today. A few things to plug before we begin the video. Some interesting stuff to discuss today. Some beef going on pre-champs, just um, more sentimental stuff around champs being potential last champs for a lot of players and for casters as well, which we'll get into. As I say, a couple things to plug before we begin here. Once again, wanted to promote this draft buff thing. Um, Ray has set us up a nice little tactical grabs champs thing you can make your fantasy team in. I'll link this down below if you guys want to check it out and participate. There's currently like 80 people in there, which I'm kind of impressed with i didn't even think i plugged it that much so yeah if you guys want to join in do that maybe tomorrow i'll uh, do an actual fantasy video where i go through and make my team depending on how much stuff happens tomorrow night second quick thing to mention is the following if you guys want to let's make this a bit smaller so you can actually see what's going on probably uh, that might just about do it yeah that's about good enough if you guys are aware of discord or you have a discord account it's really easy to make if you don't have one yet but if you guys want to join my discord at the link in the description box below there's about 600 people in there it gets very lively especially when uh, chat is on and all that like so on the left hand side here you can see that CWL predictions is a channel on the left go in there and type in exclamation mark predict or you know you'll see other people that have done it rattlesnake here lead moderator of the discord is uh, setting up a predictions game for the world championship so if you guys want to take part and I'll probably put up like a $20 Amazon gift card or something like that for the winner or uh, you know we'll see what happens but there's going to be a prize involved for sure this time it's the world championship so yeah if you guys want to check it out join the discord and get involved with seeing if you're the best predictor in the entire world um, or at least in the discord then feel free at the link in the description box below and also in the pinned comment as always so yeah like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you're new as always i would greatly appreciate it and let's hop right into it here. This bit of news I found found uh, very interesting. The other day when I was on Spitfire, Brycey and Tan uh, mentioned this to me after it finished. And I was like, damn, this is such a mad story. So the boys, as in Nasty, Quicker, Shea Sweeney, um, you know, Bance, Shawnee and Chain... They're going to be representing Celtic FC at the World Championship, which is kind of a mad story. They've obviously got involved with esports. Um, they're calling themselves the esports with uh, the capital S, which I don't particularly like. They'll learn the ways. But it's a pretty mental story nonetheless. So it doesn't seem like units are getting an organisation that have managed that. But the boys have picked up Celtic FC now. You know, Quicker is you know, from Scotland, as is Shawnee. So I can see where the connection is. Quicker goes to a lot of the, the matches up there as well, which is, you know, what it says down here. Both Shawnee and Quicker are from Glasgow. So we'll go through this very quickly because it's a pretty mad story. If you guys are from the UK or know anything about, you know, a football club sponsoring an esports team is um, a, an interesting step in this direction. So... Celtic FC Esports will support a team competing in the prestigious Cod World League Championship. So it'll be held between August 14th and 18th. So for you guys that are um, that are about here, so UCLA Bruins uh, home basketball arena in LA. So just to make sure that you guys are aware of what's going on in a couple of days, Champs does begin live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Call of Duty because an excellent subscriber mentioned that in the comment section below. Will it be live on Twitch? Yes, indeed. We are not stuck in the MLG.TV days anymore. Call of Duty is hugely popular around the world, etc, etc. Etc. 2018 edition alone had over 7 million views on Twitch. So I don't know, really know where they're getting those figures from. I think they're gassing it a little bit. Uh, but I guess they're talking overall views rather than individual views on the channel or anything like that. It will give the team worldwide exposure before Activision converts the league to a city based franchise model for 25 million each. So maybe Celtic are considering forking out a spot for Glasgow next year. The team competing in the City World Championship has five members Sean, Shawnee O'Connor, Shea Quicker Sweeney, Ben Ban Bance, Bance Bance. What even I'm on about nasty chain. Shawnee and Krieger from Glasgow, and they even went up to Celtic Park to see the boys, Celtic, win a, win a football match. So, you know, really cool story. Another thing to mention here, as we talked about a couple of days ago, Formal went on the Eavesdrop podcast with Hector, and they talked for about an hour and 15 minutes. I feel like um, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, so I don't really really cast judgment, but some people were saying that maybe they didn't expand on exactly like the Formal and Scump controversy and why they don't really get along and all that stuff in as much detail as people would like. But definitely a lot of interesting moments in this one. So this is the uh, this is the timeline effectively. So you know where Formal was born. Formal on playing multiple games at once. Difficult difficulties of being a pro gamer. I can't speak to that. I'm trying to get my words out too fast. COD Pros versus Halo Pros, etc. Um, you know, joining Optic, leaving Envy, his his first victory, um, you know, all this scene, you know, the Fortnite scene, you know, weaving in and out of the things. And yeah, you know, where did the rift start with Formal and Optic, why he left, and, um, you know, some interesting things. I'm sure a lot of you guys would find this interesting, so I'll link it down below if you 
girls want to check out the eavesdrop podcast. So this is an interesting tweet I thought from Rated that kind of resonated. People have short term memory loss. Time to leave it all on the line this week. It's a big week and not just for the money, money, money but for the future, to remind people what they seem to have forgotten. Travel to LA tomorrow. Good night, everyone. So this is a really key point for not only Rated, but also a lot of players in a similar position to him. Next year, if we do have a 12-team league, they're trying to sell 12 spots. It seems like so far they've only sold eight. Let's say they have 12 spots and we continue in a 5v5 format. Let's say it stays 5v5. If it goes 4v4, it's all kind of chaos. But let's say it stays 5v5, which it probably will, I would say. Probably a 90% chance. I don't know. I'm pulling these figures out of thin air. But let's say that is the case. And it stays 5v5. Maybe we have a couple of extra substitutes next year. So instead of just one sub, maybe we have two subs. Maybe you can even expand your team a little bit further beyond that. But the player base is going to be smaller. And because next season we don't really have, it's going to be more difficult, I would say, to move from maybe the Open into the Pro Teams. Depends how the format of the league is run, but, you know, it really depends. But look, the fact of the matter is that a lot of players this year are really looking hard right now at what their situation is in terms of how, um, you know, their reputation within the scene. A lot of players' reputations has dropped off a cliff this year. And, you know, the likes of Rated is certainly up there. Last year in the World War II, considered a, a pretty damn good assault rifle, coming very close to winning events at times. This year hasn't had as good of a year, and all of a sudden his reputation has effectively fallen off a cliff. And that really does spell disaster for him and other players in a similar position next year with franchising coming around. If they have a great performance at this event and rated plays great, then immediately he's back on people's minds when they're trying to organise their franchise team next year. If that isn't the case and they have a poor event and, you know, other players that have poor events that even are relatively well-known players or not well-known, like everyone's well-known at this level, but, you know, well-regarded players historically, like a guy like Saints or something like that, for example... You know, if they have a poor tournament here, then they may be way out of consideration for getting picked up onto a franchise team next season, and that is where the money is. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then you're not in the league. You have to work your way through contenders, and you know, no one really wants to be in a position to have to do that. And also, as I say, with the contracts and the money involved, it may be more difficult to move up from a contender spot onto a pro team next season. Um, you know, not necessarily saying that's an absolute fact, but that's definitely something that maybe is a consideration. Depends how the the whole format works, but definitely something to consider here. And ton echoes a similar message which is something that um, I'm very intrigued about how the talent side of things is going to go because right now I don't know many of the talent like personally or anything like that so it's difficult for me to say whether they know what's going to happen next season or not but you know as far as ton and that are concerned I'm pretty sure they're relatively in the dark I mean he, he says right here makes it pretty clear crazy this could be my last COD event will he get brought back next season as a, as a member of talent you know even he doesn't know at the current time I'm not even sure the top guys um, on the analyst desk I'm sure the casters are probably um, a guarantees but I'm not even sure those guys in the analyst desk and that are guaranteed to be coming back next season either I'm um, I think it's difficult to say because Activision is gonna most likely have a much heavier grip on what exactly happens next season and deciding on where things are going because as of late it's been MLG have decided a lot of things now Activision a lot of money's going into this I'm sure they're going to be taking a very close eye at things and controlling things very very closely which isn't necessarily a good thing by any means but something to consider here some casters that have been around for years if they don't get picked up to be involved in the franchise league next season then, you know, they don't cast COD anymore. That's basically how it works. Unless you cast for, you know, like a online tournament kind of things, you're not going to be casting events because it's uh, at least next season and this season as well, to some large degree, you can't really put on many events with MLG's approval. Um, pretty much all the events in the calendar are CWL events. Now, there are other events that are run by other organizers, but it's much smaller scale things. You don't have any UMGs anymore that are pretty big events that a load of the pro teams attend like we've had in the past. Maybe Activision will be more lenient on that in the next season. I highly doubt it, though. When you're making a franchise league, basically everything is going to resolve around that, which uh, revolve around that even, which basically means I would say that if you're not chosen to be like an analyst or a caster or whatever next season, um, your chance is very limited. So I think that's what Tun's getting at here. And it's really, uh, really an interesting point that we should consider. And Madcat says the same thing. Unless you make franchising and get to see the playoffs, then it's most people's last event. Time to drop pure smoke on the map. So, um, so yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely a difficult time coming up ahead. Now we have this from Temp. Kisma is garbage. <laughs> Laughing my ass off, says Temp last night. Why are you coming at big boy kids? We're winning every map. We play versus them in scrims, getting outslayed by 20 because they are lost, just flying. So we left 
Four said I 3 0 you at Anaheim. We had a fill in. Um, so yeah, Tim starting a little bit of beef pre uh, pre champs here. Pretty interesting stuff. Kismet replies with the following. So um, Splice Hardpoint 101, five hitter doorway on rotation, and uh, Temp calling him the one that's garbage. So always a little bit of spicy drama here. Enigma six are in um, pool A and uh, maybe pool B actually. Yeah, pool B and Splice are in pool H. So I think it'll be difficult for them to match up early on in this tournament. But you never know could happen. And if it does, it would certainly be a spicy matchup for sure but you know you never know what's going to come out of Temp's mouth next he's definitely an entertaining character to follow it's nice I think that even though yeah he tweets some dodgy stuff and he says some dodgy things on stream and the like but it is a nice at the very least to have some characters to get involved with and to um to you know support in the scene because I don't want everyone to become a stale robot and that's kind of a worry next season that that is what's going to happen when Activision Blizzard will likely crack down on what you're allowed to say on Twitter because as I say they're putting a much closer grasp on things and they're looking in more detail about okay how exactly are people and these players respecting and uh, representing the league which is something that MLG don't really get too much involved with even though you can get fines for saying stuff on stream and the like which actually does happen when people say fine in the chat that isn't just a meme you can actually get fined for stuff you say on stream now I thought I'd bring this past you guys as well so TJ says RK7 is in everything is in now what this implies is uh, it's not easy to determine exactly what this implies I saw this being talked about on reddit some people were saying that TJ is effectively saying that um you know everything is allowed everything is ungentleman's agreemented now I don't think that's what he's implying I think what he's implying is that if people use the RK7 as in use the three round burst pistol then he is saying that you know he's willing to just use everything and throw everything in the kitchen sink at their opposition all the stuff that is gentleman's agreemented and you're not kind of you're not meant to use you know so like things like the swordfish and the like so I'd be interested to hear your take on this I don't know whether you guys think that um that this is what he's getting at or whether he's saying that you know screw it we're using stock two we're using all the stuff I don't really think that's what he's going for I think he's just trying to imply that if someone pulls out the RK7 against them because I think there's been a little bit of um uh controversy maybe within some of the pro teams as to whether it should be gentleman's agreemented or not TJ is effectively saying we don't want it I think in this tweet and he's saying that if you do use it then you know don't be surprised when we start pulling out things that you know we're not technically meant to use against you right so I think that's what he's getting at but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts down below as always and then we have the last thing here just from Slasher I hope Modern Warfare revives old school s &D watching Charles watching Charles now is not even close to watching Ghost Blops 2 etc couldn't agree more on this one largely got into Call of Duty watching a load of those Charles back in the Black Ops 3 days it was so much much fun to watch in the evenings none of that really goes on nowadays so i'm hoping s and d will be great i think that is one thing i'm pretty confident this game will be good on i'm not sold on the respawn but i think the search and destroy will be good i think that the uh, the map design they've gone for probably is more of a ghost style probably caters more to some search and destroy a little bit more of a variation but respawn i'm not so sure but you know you don't play respawn in chals a lot of the time so um hopefully it'll be a good year but yeah that's all i had to talk about for you guys today a couple of days time champs begins hope you're looking forward to it. i certainly am so yeah like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always i would greatly appreciate it, as always and i will see you next time